All right, you guys, welcome back to the second part of our 3D layer and lighting tutorial. In this one, we're going to actually set up the lights to make this room look natural with the candlesticks, the outside light, and the fire pit. And then we're gonna develop a 3D camera that allows us then to move throughout this faux three-dimensional space. So let's go ahead and head back into After Effects and check this out. Now, before we do anything, it's important that we make sure to name our layers accordingly. Wall left, wall right, floor, candlestick left, etc. This is gonna help us as we start to place lights later on. I'm gonna go ahead and take some time and do that now. Okay, so once we've named our layers, we have to make sure that we change what's called the material properties of our layers to cast shadows and accept lights. Now when you make a layer a 3D layer, there is an option under the pull down called material options. So toggle down candlestick right, come down to your material options and toggle that down. This is where we can change the settings that help it interact with the lights that we're about to make. Now, by default, when it's a 3D layer, it is already set to accept lights, and that's great. But we wanna make sure that we have it set to cast shadows as well. This will allow our lights in our environment to actually cast shadows from our shapes. Let's go ahead and just click on where it says off, and that turns it on. Now, for the sake of space, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this back up. And I'm gonna do this now for every single one of my layers except for my forest background. Go ahead and do this now. Okay, so once all of your material options are set to cast shadows, we can now start to make our lights. I'm gonna work with point lights only for now. I'm gonna go up to layer, new, light, And I'm gonna work with a purple light for the outside. I kinda of want the outside to have this nighttime looking purple hue to it. I'm gonna default this back down to 100. Now, we wanna make sure that our light fall off and that's how the light kind of dissipates with distance. The defaults to none. Inverse square clamped is a very natural looking fall off. So go ahead and change this from none to inverse square clamped. You can keep the radius at 500 for now. Make sure that this casts shadows. And then whatever this is by default, that's fine. We're gonna adjust it here in a second. I know yours will probably be different than mine and that's okay. Let's go ahead and change this to a point light as well. So a purple point light, 100% intensity, inverse square clamped fall off, cast shadows. Hit okay. Now this is going to drastically change the way that our environment looks. And we have this orb light now. We can kind of click and drag around. You can see that as we do that, it's actually changing the way the environment looks. And notice how, because we've set the material options on all of our layers to cast shadows, we actually see the shapes of our layers casting shadows on our walls. Now, if you guys aren't just completely thrilled with this, something's wrong. This is a really fun thing to do, and it really brings to life a two-dimensional room. Now, I want this point light to be closer to my outside layer. So I'm gonna grab the, uh, the Z, the blue Z arrow, and I'm gonna drag this outside to illuminate. And that darkens our room, and it will. But we can also change the intensity of the outside light to better fall into the room. Double click your point light that you just made in your timeline. Now the intensity slider is how bright or intense the light is coming from that source. The radius is how far that light can reach. And then the shadow darkness and the shadow diffusion is the way the shadows will look once the light starts to cast something. 
Now, this doesn't really seem to be doing anything, so I'm going to actually physically change where the light is. By bringing it closer to the window, it can really start to maximize the fall off into the room itself. A lot of this is trial and error. So don't be afraid to, to move the light around and change some of those parameters to see how exactly you can get this to look. Let's go ahead and make another point light. Layer, new light. And this time I'm gonna make a light for the candlesticks. I'm gonna change the color of this light to be kind of a, uh, a white yellow. And because we don't have the light in our environment, I tend to just keep all of these settings the same as my previous light, just to place it in the environment and then come back and adjust them after it's placed. So I'm just gonna hit okay after changing the color. I'm gonna bring this light over to my candlestick and then adjust it in my top view and drag it over to be just in front of my candlestick. Now we don't want this to come behind the candlestick, otherwise it just backlights the candle. So we want it to be just in front to make it appear that it's glowing. Now that to me looks like it's casting too much light for a candle. So I'm gonna double click that point light, play with the intensity a little bit, change the radius to be a lot smaller since candles wouldn't have a whole lot of reach. That looks pretty good there. I'll hit okay. Now I wanna start getting in the habit of naming our lights. So for our first light, I'm gonna hit enter and call this outside purple light. The one we just made is going to be candle left light. And let's duplicate candle left light by hitting control D and just taking our red X arrow and dragging it over to our other candlestick. Perfect. So let's make a light now for our fire pit. Let's go to layer, new, light. And this time I'm gonna change the color to kind of a red orange to mimic the fire. I'm gonna keep my settings the same until I get it into my scene. I'm gonna then position this point light to be right in front of the fire pit. And you can see how I'm using, kind of going between both of my views here. I use my right active camera view to do the up down movement since I can't see this light go up and down in my top view. You see how it looks the same there. But then I use my top view to come forward and back since it's harder to position in my active camera view. I'm gonna position this right in front of the fire. I kind of like that intensity, but I'm gonna play with it to see if I can make it look a little bit better. I'm gonna go a little bit brighter to make it reflect a bit more. Increase the, the radius of the fall off just to kind of illuminate this room. But the shadow darkness doesn't need to be nearly as intense. Yeah, it's better. Hit okay. Now this back wall doesn't have a orangey glow. And the reason is this, this fire pit is this blockade that's keeping the light. And you can see the shadow transmission here. It's keeping the light from hitting that back wall. So I'm actually gonna duplicate this point light we just made by hitting control D and then dragging it in Z space behind my fire pit. And now that starts to illuminate the back wall. 
Now I don't like the intensity there, so I'm going to decrease the intensity for the second point light that I made. And then I'll adjust the radius, that way it doesn't have as much reach as our first point. And then make sure that the shadows aren't super intense coming from it. Looks good to me. Yeah, yeah better. That's better. So we can see now with just five lights, we have a massive change in how our room looks. Now we have some light spill over here from our outside light. Notice how as I change the outside light, it also changes the way the shadows play. So if we have some areas here that are, are a little bit spilly, um, don't worry too much about those. We could always just change the position of our walls as well. To try to maybe, yeah, there, that solved that issue. So you could always try to manipulate the walls a little bit if uh, the light starts to spill in from certain areas. I'm gonna change my view to one view so I can kind of view this a bit more holistically. So now we've created a entire three-dimensional room complete with lights and different sources of light. Now what I love about this is that we can completely keyframe these lights to flicker. We can even make them move to kind of make it look like the, the moon outside is, is moving and the shadows start to shift. There's a lot of fun we can have with lights. But what I want to do now is I want to introduce you guys to cameras inside of After Effects. And these cameras are going to let us move like as if we had an actual camera in this space, allow us to move through it. Um, and this is the biggest takeaway of this exercise. You guys will start to be able to create these layered compositions for your animations and then insert a camera and move that camera around like as if it were a film. This gives us complete creative control over how we tell our stories. And that's really the big takeaway here. So back inside of After Effects, I want to create my first camera. So let's come up to Layer, New, Camera. Now right away, this looks intimidating. There are a lot of parameters that we can change inside of our camera settings dialog box, including a type of camera. What I want you guys to know for right now is that a basic two node camera by default is gonna be fine. Truth be told, I could spend an hour on all the essentials of an After Effects camera, but let's just go ahead and hit OK for right now. Now visually, nothing has changed, but I wanna go back to my two view horizontal. I'm gonna zoom out a bit and notice what we've created here. This little box with the axis off of it, this is our camera. And this triangle that it creates is the field of view that that camera has. Now what's absolutely remarkable about this is I can grab my camera box and I can start to completely navigate inside of this 3D space. And because these layers have been set in 3D, there's that parallax effect. Insert your camera and play with it just for a little bit and then control Z back to where the camera is set to default. So what I wanna do now is I wanna to start to keyframe the camera's movements to kinda of create a cinematic scene. I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard for the camera and we can actually now start to keyframe the position of our camera over time. I'm gonna turn the stopwatch on at zero seconds. I wanna kinda of do a, a nice push in. Now notice how we have the ceiling, we, we never really created a ceiling for our scene. We easily could by duplicating our floor here and bringing it up. Right, so we could easily create a ceiling that way. Or we could just reposition our camera to where it doesn't see the top. Think of this as kinda of like a sitcom set but I wanna start my camera kinda of pulled out a little bit. 
So I'm going to move it just until the edges of those layers start to appear. Looks good to me. And over the course of maybe four seconds, I want my camera through Z space to push in toward the window. And then using just my Y parameter to kind of tilt down. So what I have now as this renders is a camera movement through space. Now cameras can be remarkably complex things. If I go back to my two view horizontal, notice how I have a little dot right here on the motion path of my camera. This is, much like the pen tool, a Bezier handle. I can start to create curved paths for my camera and really create some complex movements. So as you guys start to play with three-dimensional environments and cameras and lights, I want you guys to think of this like a real-world set. And as you guys start to play with these in your animations, maybe as a nice intro shot or as a, a dramatic shot where maybe it flies toward a character in a window or um, toward a certain environment, think of these cinematically. Light them cinematically. The lights can just so drastically change the way something looks. So have fun with it, play with it, um, even with this scene that we made here. Play with different camera uh, keyframes, play with some rotation of the camera, um, and try to get those lights maybe to flicker by keyframing the intensity. Um, try to make this scene come to life. <laughs>